or shock absorber here. A lot of these, are, um, obviously, a lot of these are mechanical type of models. I've got in more uh, architectural model, models later on. But um, these, these all work exactly the same way using the 3D functionality in AutoCAD. What we've got here is a spring. And uh, I just want to use a, a, one of the solid modeling commands. Um, we've got all the basic stuff like box, cylinder, add and join, uh, add and subtract, and so on. But in this case, I want to do a sweep. Now, one of the easy things that we can do in, in AutoCAD is, is something like a sweep, because I don't have to draw my circle perfectly normal to the uh, path of the sweep. I can just draw it in the current UCS. Because when I go to uh, the solid model here and, and use sweep, it will take that profile and sweep it correctly along the curve that I've selected. Let's wait for it to finish. There we go. And it, it automatically takes that geometry and put, uh, places it normal to the curve and then does the sweep. So just a little side issue here with uh, modeling. What we're going to do now is looking at, look at something that's absolutely fantastic that they've done in the latest AutoCAD, and that's solid history. Um, obviously, there are, um, there's all the software out there like Inventor and so on that uh, have uh, history of, you know, you've got the history of solids in there, and it's more parametric modeling. Well, AutoCAD, in the last release, they've just added uh, history to solids. So what we'll do is we'll just open up um, another model. That's not the one I want, so we'll just start something new. And... Um, I'll just show you a little bit of how we can work with uh, solid history in, uh, in the modeler in, uh, in AutoCAD. First of all, in solids, you'll notice I've got the solid history button pressed in. This records the history of anything that I actually model. And if I go ahead and draw myself just a simple component, and we'll extrude this. And we'll change the uh, the um, display to shaded with wireframe. And I'll just ch change this to another layer so you can see it better on the screen. Okay. So now with solid history on here, if I actually uh, model something, um, let's, for instance, uh, add a fillet to this. So if I add a fillet to the edge, and push the fillet, or type the value in for the fillet to get a fillet on this model. Whoops, do that again. What I can now do, because I've got solid history on this, I can actually go back to this um, feature. And it's important that you use the control key to select the relevant geometry, because if you just go to the model, it wants to select the whole 3D solid. You've got to use the control key to select any features that have history. And you'll notice I've got the little uh, grip here to change the uh, fillet radius. So I can just go ahead and, can, and change the fillet radius just by pushing and pulling. Uh, likewise, if I um, draw, let's put the dynamic UCS on. And draw something on the side, and uh, I'll just push and pull that one. Okay. With this, let me just put, uh, there we are. With this now, if I again use the control key and select that, I've got the ability to change perhaps the, the depth of the cut, 
the size of the cut and the position of the cut. Now joining Neil Phillips. You've got a, a very, very quick way of editing uh, features on a solid model that we just never had before. Uh, let's also try something else here. Let's um, sketch on the top face. And we'll extrude this circle down. We'll change the color of it so we can see what's going on. So we'll change its properties and just override the color. Okay, I've got two separate solids here. Uh, if we change this to a cut, so let's go to the cut command, select the, ba the base solid, the solid that we want to cut from it. Okay. Obviously, the color has been transferred to the model from the, uh, the feature that we've just added. I use the control key and select this. I can move it about. I can resize it. So straight away, we've got the ability of going back to features in solid models, as long as the history was switched on, and, and change the features on this model, which is absolutely brilliant, because in the past, to move a hole, for instance, you had to fill it in, then move the hole, uh, sorry, fill it in, create another hole, and so on. Well, with the history, we've got the ability of changing the features in the solid model. Okay, so we're running short of time. What I want to do next is um, a quick look at slicing uh, solids. So let's open up another drawing here. Okay, so I've got a solid model that's been created. Uh, I want to uh, cut this into two pieces. So what we're going to do is go to the top view here, make sure we're in a parallel view, not perspective. And I'm just going to go to the home ribbon and create a polyline. We'll put ortho on, or polar, whichever one you choose. Okay, there's my polyline in yellow. You might just be able to see it there highlighted. Uh, as I did before, what I'm going to do is take that, change its properties, and give it a height. And again, as I did earlier with the walls in the building, we'll take this uh, polyline and we'll convert it to a surface. We'll convert to surface, select the polyline. That gives me a surface model, or a surface on my model. And then all I need to do now is use um, a slice to slice the solid using, if I just use the surface option here, the surface. Keep both sides. And I'll use, why don't we use the move gizmo and take this block and just move it out of the way. There we go. So I've used some basic geometry polyline given it thickness, converted it to a surface, then I was able to use the surface to break the solid up into two pieces. So that's editing, uh, editing solids and slicing solids. Okay, we need to move on to 2D now. We've got all these 3D models and we need to uh, move on to uh, uh, 2D. So um, how do we do this? Well, let me just change this to parallel view. In the section uh, part of the ribbon, the home ribbon, we've got the ability of creating flat shots. A flat shot will take whatever you see on the screen, it will create that 3D, take that 3D model and create a flat shot of it, a 2D block if you like, and place it onto the current UCS. So if we take a flat shot of this, I'll use all the, um, the default settings to show obscured lines, i.e. hidden detail and so on, click on create, and that will actually give me a block that I can place on my current UCS and give me a view that I can then put out to paper space. Uh, likewise, if we take um, the top view of our model here, again, go to flat shot, create it, back to the plan view, and place my block. So very, very quickly from a 3D model, we can actually create 2D uh, views and elevations um, that we can actually place on the paper space. Now, certainly with buildings, uh, you need to create sections as well. We don't just want elevations. So I'll just go through a quick example. 
of how we can create sections using the new AutoCAD functionality. So I'll just create or we'll open up another drawing here. We'll change this to a parallel view. Okay, I'm going to work in the top view here, I think, anyway. So what, I'm going to, what I've got is a solid model. This could be a building. This is a mechanical part. It could be a building. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, a section. All right, I'm going to section this. So we go to section plane. Use the draw option. And we just draw the ortho on our section through the building or the model. Um, give it a position uh, on one side that we're looking at, and you can see in 3D what uh, you get on the, on the view on the right-hand side here. Um, it gives me a, a 3D surface, if you like, showing the section that's going to be created. And then all we do is select this geometry, right-click, and create a 2D section. Uh, the default will be to create a 2D section. We can create 3D sections as well. So this is a 2D section. And I'll just create this and place it just above my 3D model up on the top left-hand corner here. It's a block, so we just accept the scale and the, and the position and so on. So now I've got a 2D section of my 3D model. Now this can be updated. Uh, it's a question I get asked all the time. Well, you know, so what? I've just created this. How do I change it? Well, it's quite simple. We take the section uh, view here, and you get all the grips on it as you would in Auto expect in AutoCAD, and we can just move the relevant grip to change the section. Uh, it doesn't change it automatically. We now have to right-click on this, generate the 2D section again, and just replace the existing block with that updated section. And as you can see, the section now has changed in uh, relationship to the section line that I've drawn on the 3D model. Okay, so if you wanted to create sections and elevations from buildings or mechanical designs, then we've got the section plane and the flat shot as useful 3D commands within Inventor. Okay, um, two more things very quickly. Uh, rendering, uh, obviously we've got rendering and have had rendering in AutoCAD for a long time. So if I just uh, bring in uh, a model of a, a house and we change this to um, now, this is important as well. Um, you do have different styles. Of, you've got the style manager in AutoCAD, which enables you to flick very quickly between hidden detail, uh, between uh, conceptual um, to shaded with edges. Um, so you've got different uh, um, commands available to you in, in here to, to, for different uh, uh, visual styles. Let's go to realistic. Okay, and we'll go to render. In fact, we're, we're keeping the home actually. And uh, material browser, that's what I'm after. Okay. Now, this will show us the materials that we've actually got in the model itself here. It will also show us the materials that we have in our Autodesk library that was uh, supplied from Autodesk. And we have a My Library materials where you can add your own materials in here. So let's go into the material library and the Autodesk library. And we'll choose uh, flooring. And we'll choose a different type of flooring for the floor here. All you've got to do is just drag and drop it onto the, onto the surfaces that you want to add the material to. And as long as you've got it in the relevant uh, uh, visual style, you'll see it updated straight away. Let's go to the walls. Uh, got a covering to something, select the walls, and that will adjust the rendering for the walls. If we go back to the, um, the flooring, for instance, and just double click on this, this will enable us to edit our local uh, material style, um, which we can adjust should we wish. So let's take um, this uh, American cherry wood covering, and uh, if I can just move this over slightly. Okay, I can transform uh, the, the, the finish, so I can, uh, I can rotate. And as I rotate, it rotates the preview on the screen here. 
um, I can change the scale. 